Hi, um, Tatiana Derevadisyan from the Armenian Institute, and I'm really pleased to have Sona Motsasyan here today with us. Um, as everyone knows, the Armenian Institute is celebrating 20 years of, um, of, its, um, of its existence, and um, we are really honored to have Sona here participating and sort of talking to us a little bit as part of this, um, as part of our anniversary uh, series of celebrations. Sona, tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Sona Movsesian, and I guess, I mean, there's a lot to say about me. I was born in Montebello, California. It's a suburb in Los Angeles. I, um, I've been here my whole life. I've never left. I went to, uh, I studied abroad in London for about three months, and then I was in San Diego for about four months going to school there, but that's about as long as I've been away from LA. Um, I, uh, I'm married. I have two babies. I have lots of Armenian grandparents around all the time now, <laughs> helping me out with these babies. Uh, and, uh, that's pretty much my life. I, I work for Conan O'Brien. I've worked for him for 12 years. I, before that I worked for NBC for about four years, which is a network in in the United States. And uh, I mean, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. It's really not much more exciting than that. I mean, that's what it is. Well, you know, I didn't actually introduce, I didn't actually introduce you as um, Conan O'Brien's assistant, but I, I like to assume that everybody knows who you are, having seen that some of the, even if you're not watching TV in America, uh, people would have caught you through um, YouTube and on the Conan YouTube channel. Um, you've obviously, you know, I think you're um, you're downplaying um, your sort of uh, background in life uh, quite a bit, I would say. Uh, you've, um, I think it's fair to say, from what we see as um, viewers of of um, of this show, you've been very much handholding um, him throughout the years. Um, everybody knows that a personal assistant is, you know, uh, is the key to um, a lot of one's success. Uh, so. I mean, tell us what what's been what has it been like working for someone as successful as Conan O'Brien? Um, and you know, what have you how what have you learned? What have you sort of you know from your own background? What have you been able to bring as well to your workplace? Um, working for so I never worked directly for a, a celebrity before I worked for Conan, so I didn't know what to expect. I you know I think that. Like a lot of people, I had these images in my mind of typical entertainment assistants who, you know, run around the city getting dry cleaning and walking the dog and picking up kids from school and stuff. And so I really didn't know what to expect. Um, and luckily, I, I think I hit the jackpot. I hit, I, uh, I work for somebody who's really great. He's uh, very understanding of my, my time. He's, um, he's you know he he and i have developed sort of like a brother sister relationship which um i think can sometimes also be a hindrance probably to you know us doing our our work or me doing my work properly um but it's it's fun i'm not gonna lie i know superficially i shouldn't i should say all the great things and perks about working for a celebrity and how you know it's nice to work in an environment that's full of comedy, but really my, my favorite thing is, is just riding on his coattails for the perks. I mean, I get to like go to all these incredible places and visit really great countries and cities and meet really great people. And, and I think that uh, it's, it's just, it's, uh, it's fun to get sort of like the residual sort of glamor from his life and pretend that I'm, I'm much cooler than I am for a little bit, but it's uh, it's definitely a, an experience and I, I love it. I've been doing it for a really long time and I, I, I haven't stopped loving it the whole time I've been doing it. Um, and then my background, I think that, uh, I mean, my, my background is, if you're talking about my Armenian-ness and if I bring that into working for him, I think it's inevitable. I mean, we, we work in LA, there's a huge community here. Um, you know, he has heard me speak Armenian with members of my family on the phone before. He's, you know, we've talked about Armenian Christmas because I, I never 
get it together to get him gifts for regular Christmas. And I'm always like, I'm gonna get you a gift for Armenian Christmas, which always just buys me time. And uh, it's, it's just, it's inevitable that who I am and where I come from just seeps into my work life. Can I ask, did he, did he end up buying you that car or? <laughs> no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Not only did he not buy me a car, I tell people this all the time. So in the, in the piece that we taped, he like tore apart my car and was like making fun of it. And I thought, oh, okay, they'll just fix it after we shoot. No one fixed it. No one fixed it. And then I think like a few months after we shot that piece, my car just died on the freeway. Uh -huh. died and so uh i had to end up getting another one but no he got me that gross car he gave me on on camera it was disgusting i mean it was just <laughs> like horrible car that he got me but no i mean i think that everyone thought like oh he gave you that really bad car and then behind the scenes he probably like got you a nice like car but no i mean I kept it. That. <laughs> no absolutely not all right you need to bring that up with him but he did take you to armenia and i think that that was was that you pushing him or was that just him deciding one day, you know what, I've, I just want to know what your, um, what, what your roots are like, you know, what your roots are. That, that was him. I mean, I wish I could take credit for it. I think that in the sense that I can take credit for it, it's, I talk about my Armenianness so much that I feel like I, it was like inception. I just kind of like somehow planted it in his brain. But uh, <laughs> we had gone to Cuba earlier that year and it had gone really well and, and Conan uh, wanted to do this series where he just goes to different countries and explores them and, and, uh, and learns about the cultures and, and, and everything. And so we were talking about which country we should go to next. I mean, we were, I remember the meeting, we were all kind of like throwing out all these incredible places. And then Conan was like, why don't we take Stone out of Armenia? And he, you know, uh, and I think I was like, no one's going to, go for that like there's no way that people are going to be like that sounds like a great idea but everybody liked it and then we did it and so I mean it's all it was all Conan it was his idea to do it well I, I remember the the, the 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 one thing that struck me was the I think at the time you weren't married or, or you weren't engaged and, and he took you to a, um, a matchmaker over there um the, 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 was that woman actually any good oh my god <laughs> was it helpful I mean, it must have been so weird for an LA Armenian to be going to go to a Yerevan Sea matchmaker. <laughs> it was, it was. Also, I didn't know this, but I don't think there, I don't think that matchmakers and people who do that stuff, I don't think they're like, I, I don't, I, I mean, I, I don't, I want to say they're kind of looked down upon a little bit in Armenia, but <laughs> are they? I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I think I heard somebody tell me that, but it was, so funny because before we went, Conan did this interview with my family, with my grandparents and my parents, just sort of talking to them about my Armenianness and like telling them we were going to go. And all my grandma cared about, she didn't care about the cameras or this like late night talk show host. She was like, find my granddaughter a husband. Like that's all she cared about. That's all she talked about. She was just like, just find her a husband. She didn't know who he was. She didn't care there were cameras pointed in her direction. And, and that's how my Yaya was towards like the end of her life. She was very much like, uh, I think she knew that the end was coming for her and she just really wanted me to get married. Um, and then when we were in Armenia, no one told me that we were gonna go to a matchmaker until we got there. And I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I, I can't remember laughing that hard shooting anything else in Armenia. I mean, it was like, Every guy she showed us, she's like, this guy's great. He's, you know, 35 and he's really nice and blah, 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 blah. And then she'd be like, well, there's one thing that you need to know about him. And he was in prison for stabbing. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, every guy came with like a ca caveat. And the one guy who was like kind of normal was like 19 or something. <laughs> it was just so, it was so funny. I remember just like, she'd be like this guy he's great blah 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 he's got a good job and then we'd all sort of hold our breath and be like what's the catch here and she'd be like well the catch is blah blah blah, blah. he's got six kids from his ex-wife that he just divorced three months ago you know I mean it was there was always like this like asterisk next to all their names you know 
Well, it must be, it must be because, um, and you know, myself being Armenian, you, you, your parents think that they know everybody who's right, who's a potential match for you. So it's like, I guess it's the last frontier going to the matchmaker. I know, I think so. I mean, but, I, I think that they had just, failed so many times here they were like let's just see what happens there maybe she'll have better luck yeah. but tell i mean so but, i mean you know you did obviously and, and i and i uh, when i met you you were you just married you were just married and your husband seemed very lovely so i don't know if you want to tell us a little bit about how you guys met because if i'm not mistaken he's from he's originally from armenia as well he didn't grow he up is, in la he, he is originally from armenia he came here when he was 11. Uh, so he's been here for quite some time now, but, you know, he's, uh, I think that, you know, you, there's always so much of, of where he's from and, and how he grew up that seeps into who he is. I mean, it's inevitable that that would happen. And it's, it's nice. It's nice to get that sort of different perspective. Um, but yeah, I think after, I want to say maybe six months after uh, we went to Armenia, my, you know, I was in San Diego with, work at the at comic-con which is you know the big comic yeah. convention that's got like i don't even know how many hundred thousand people i don't it's it's this massive massive event and i was walking around with my friend who's not armenian and he was walking around with his friend who's not armenian and our friends knew each other and so they ran into each other and then he and i started talking and he recognized me from the show and he, you know, told me he was Armenian and, and we really hit it off. So it was just very random, um, Isn't it? but it, it, it was nice. I mean, it was a nice sort of random kind of meet and, uh, and, you know, two years later we were, we were married. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, the, it, but at that point, my grandma had unfortunately passed away, but oh. I also feel as though when she passed away, she like went up and like did something. I really <laughs> think that she was like, she was pulling the strings somehow. I mean, she she was involved in whatever way she was involved in, you know, from from the great beyond. Yeah, she, she's probably dancing as well with joy. Um, that that's a beautiful story, actually. That's quite beautiful. Um, I mean, I guess it, it must be. Um, I, I don't know if he's sort of lived in San Diego or if he was there visiting, but LA Armenians are quite, I would say, distinct from a lot of other um, Armenians around the world. And, um, you know, I think they're even, they're very different to New York Armenians and so on. And, the, and there's a lot of stereotypical notions. I remember when I first visited LA, there was so much I learned about Armenians there that I hadn't, I didn't know, like, you know, how many are incarcerated, which I, I was really surprised about. But, um, yeah. and you know, and, and I have seen these through certain TV shows over the years where there are some certain types of Armenian stereotypes. So what are the kind of Armenian stereotypes that um, you see um, on a daily basis in, you know, when you're out and about in a non-Armenian environment? Um, how do others perceive Armenians over there? Um, one of the biggest things about our community, and I'll say this because it's proven, is we're terrible drivers. And I'm gonna say that because I moved to Glendale and I think Armenians all over the world know about Glendale because it's our little, it's our little hub in Los Angeles. I mean, everywhere you yeah. go, there's Armenians. It's but the it's second motherland. There, huh? It's the second motherland. <laughs> it's the second, it is, it's the second motherland. And if you move there, your car insurance rates automatically go up and not by a little bit, by a significant amount of money. And it's because anybody who moves to Glendale, they have a higher risk of, you know, getting into accidents and stuff because the drivers there are terrible. Um, <laughs> and I want to say, somebody gave me some statistic. I don't know how accurate it is. I don't even, I it might even be irresponsible to repeat this, but there are more accidents in Glendale than there are in most cities in the United States. What? So, yeah, so we are, terrible drivers uh and it's and it's not just me saying that as a stereotype it's you know like your car insurance is saying that um <laughs> but also you know i mean i think as as big as as the community is in la each place that you're from in la also has its own sort of characteristics so i'm from montebello and the community in montebello has a lot of rusa highs a lot of hyostanthes 
And a lot of the Rusahais that live there have been there for a while, since like the 60s. So relatively speaking, for the Armenian community in LA, that's pretty old. Um, and then Glendale, it's a lot more sort of newer people who come here from Iran and from Armenia. And, and, and so it's, it's, and like, you know, uh, where you are sort of from originally has a lot to do with how you adapt here as well, because you gravitate towards the people. I mean, like Beirutsis gravitate towards Beirutsis. And, and, and so it's, it's a really, it's a very interesting, like huge, intense community. Uh, but I, I am really, really happy that I get to live here and raise my kids here. I'm glad I was, I grew up here. I went to an Armenian school. I'm planning on sending my kids to an Armenian school for a little bit. Mm. And so it's, it's, a. Uh, but also some of the stereotypes, I mean, you know, someone got my kids track suits to <laughs> fit in and, uh, you know, what? it's like, they're, it's like baby's first track suits. Cause is that a thing over there? That's a stereotype. I was walking around in Adidas tracksuits, you know, and uh, we're loud. I think that when I was living in Glendale, I, I don't live in Glendale now. I live in, a, in an area called Al Zadina, which doesn't have as many Armenians, unfortunately, but it's still got a good amount. But in Glendale, all your neighbors are loud. Like there's a contest next door every Saturday <laughs> and you don't want to be the person calling the cops, but also you can't sleep. I mean, the, the people next to us, I think they were renting so much stuff for so long that they ended up just buying all these extra tables and chairs because mm -hmm. they were at, like, they were having these massive events every single weekend. It was, oh it was joyful, but it was also <laughs> like, all right, we get it. Like you like to dance and eat. <laughs> Let's just rein it in a little. Okay. You know what? I have to say, I mean, we have concentrated areas of Armenians in, in London as well, but I don't, I don't hear of, I think we're, we've been trained. Um, we've been trained, <laughs> we've been reined in. Because you were, you said you, you spent three months here studying and, and you actually um, met a very good friend of mine while you were studying here. I mean, what was your, having never sort of, I guess, lived elsewhere and London being that sort of first experience outside, what was what were what was London like? Did you mix with Armenians here very much? And what did you what did you make of them compared to you know LA Armenians that you knew back home? I did. I, I remember so I went to London to study abroad there when I was 18. I turned 19 while I was there. So I was relatively young. Um, and I I think that it was my first time away from LA. So the first thing I did was I I remember like searching Armenian community in London. I remember searching that online, just sort of seeing how I could find any sort of anything that just reminded me of home, a church, uh, you know, a, 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 you know a, an Armenian center, um, a school, just anything that, you know, made me feel that connection that I have to LA. And so uh, the friend that you're talking about is Anais Heroyan and or Anais, I mean Thomas now, I guess, because we met yeah. each other at her wedding. So yes. um, Anais, uh, you know, I remember I emailed this group uh, that was in sorry, Armenian youth group, and Anais responded to me, and uh, she became one of my closest and dearest friends in London while I was there. She and it it meant so much to me to be able to go someplace where I could hear the language that I was just used to hearing, to hear Armenian in a household setting, to have Armenian food, to uh, meet other Armenians. I mean, it, it was, you know, it could be very isolating to go someplace where you don't know anybody. And then Armenians are always very accepting of new people. I mean, that's yeah. one of the best things about us is you go someplace, you don't know anybody and they'll be like, yeah, come over. I know I've known you for five minutes, but come to my house and like live with me. You know? yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so, you know, I was really lucky to have met Anais. I was really, really blessed to have met her. She had, I remember they had a big party on a boat you know, while I was there. And so I went and I went to this Armenian mm -hmm. party and there was like, you know, other Armenians there. And it was just such a, it, it really helped. It really helped me, I think, uh, deal with 
the homesickness I was having. And so yeah. it really meant a lot to me to find the Armenian community there. And now anywhere I go, I, I search for the Armenian community anywhere in any country I go to. That's, that, that, that is, I think, I think all of us have a tendency to do that. I, I did that when I went to Ethiopia and my, my colleague, um, a journalist at the time I was working at The Guardian, she just went ballistic when she found out I'd never been to Armenia and yet I was forcing her to go to all these places in, in Addis Ababa. <laughs> but I went to Armenia shortly after that. But um, no, I mean, did you, I mean, what were your, what were your thoughts about British Armenians? Would you, would, would you say that they're very different from, um, I guess, American Armenians or LA Armenians? You know what? No, not really. I think that I, I mean, maybe I, maybe I'm just, my memory of them is a little skewed, but I, I have to say that uh, Armenians are Armenians. I feel like no matter where we are, Armenians are Armenians. I think that there's just some, something in our DNA that's everywhere, no matter what part of diaspora you're from or whether you're even in the, in Armenia, it's, it's this, there is uh, something about Armenians that is so familiar no matter where you are. And so, but I really loved the British Armenians. I think that they were, I mean, you know, they're just, they were really sweet to me. They were really kind. They were very curious about me. And I think a lot of people have this fascination with LA just because our community is so big and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, like uh, to, to just walk around Glendale and see Armenian storefronts is something that's a little foreign for some people. It's weird. It's, it's not something they're used to. And, and so I think that they are always, like, I remember they just asked me a million questions about LA and about, you know, where I was from and stuff. And, and it was, it was nice. I mean, but I, and in terms of the difference, I can't say, I, I, I mean, I can't say I really noticed much of a difference. I feel like, There's... I feel like I noticed a lot more similarities than I did differences. That's good. That's good. I think, I think that's a fair, I think that's a fair comment. Um, I do think that we have a little bit, we, we developed, um, we've picked up traits, you know, we all pick up traits wherever we live in these different communities. Um, but yeah, you're right. In essence, Armenians are Armenians and I'd agree. Um, I've experienced wonderful hospitality in LA um, from my relatives over there. And um, yeah, it, it is something quite unique. But I, you know what, I want to say thank you very much, though, for agreeing to speak to us and, and to learn more about, I guess, you um, or hearing more about you. Um, is there anything that you would want to share with, with our audience? A story I remember is when we were, we were shooting a week of shows in Atlanta, and I remember I, it was around Easter Sunday, and I remember looking for an Armenian church so I could go to, to church for Easter Sunday, and, and Conan was actually going to come with me. And um, I overslept and I couldn't make it. I know. And, and he, I remember I woke up and he had all the, I had all these phone calls from Conan being like, are we going to Armenian church? And I just overslept. And I think that the thing that is always, I mean, the story just bums me out when I think about it, because I think it would have been a really great experience. But if you are anywhere, if you're anywhere in the world or any city, we're there in some capacity, I think. And it's always very enlightening to go and see them, um, to see the community, see whatever Armenian church we may have uh, built somewhere. Even if the community is super tiny, I remember the Armenians from Hawaii reached out to me once and, wow. uh, and everyone is so proud. They're very proud of, even if there's like four of them, four families, you know, that's their community. And it's, it's a really beautiful thing to see. And I think it's important, especially for people from really big communities, like the one in LA to just go out and, and, and whenever you're traveling to just sort of find that Armenian contingent and just sort of learn a little bit about them. Cause I, I really do think it's just, it's just beautiful how we've stuck together. Mm -hmm.